Welcome to TOA Talks, the podcast from the town of Ajax. I'm your host, Devin Jarvis, the Supervisor of Communications and Engagement. And on today's episode, we're talking with the Director of Planning and Development Services, Jeff Romanowski. Keep listening to hear more about the Planning and Development Department and its layers of decision-making, the day-to-day as a planner, positives of intensification and its challenges for planners, Jeff's career path to planning, and what's coming for 2024 and beyond. TOA Talks. So um, before we get started here today, we do have a quick icebreaker. So Jeff, if you'd like to take a piece of paper out of the bowl and pass it to me, I'll read it out. Don't look at it. You can, you know, take a sneak peek. (laughs) Okay, this is a good one. Okay. What is one of the most memorable adventures or experiences you've had traveling? I guess, you know, most recently in 2022, me and my wife and one of my daughters and the dog did a cross-country camping adventure. Oh, cool. Yeah. We went all the way out to Canmore through Canada, three days through Ontario, wow. camping. So like each kind of stop you'd be camping in yeah, the yeah, provinces? Yeah, Sudbury was the first night, Lake Superior Provincial Park in July, mm-hmm. minus two. That wow. was pretty intense. All the way out through the prairies, Manitoba, Saskatoon, stayed in Canmore, then came back through the States, Montana, yeah, that's amazing. Wyoming, South Dakota, Mm -hmm. Wyoming was like crazy, just like never experienced it before. Like you're in a high desert plain, higher than the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, I've never been. So it looks like Mars. (laughs) It's like desert. Wow. But it's the most of the states not desert. Right. So it's it's weird. But yeah, South Dakota, Chicago, through Chicago, we were gone for like 28 days. Yeah. And yeah, that was a really cool adventure. I've done lots of cool trips, but that's the one that I keep referring back to when someone's like, let's go on a trip or let's do this. And I'm like, I went on this trip. And yeah, that's honestly, really... that's super cool. Yeah, um, like yeah. I'm an avid camper too, but I've never done anything like that. So that's amazing. Yeah, I was a little like I was a little nervous because we had an 11 month old at the time. Right. Yeah, she was a rock star. Yeah. So she came really, with you yeah. the entire time? Yeah, she wow. camped. She, she was in the tent. We had like the pack and play in the tent. Nice. It was cozy. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's yeah. a really cool family it, experience. It, it was it was a really good experience. Yeah. yeah. So definitely most memorable to date for yeah. sure. For well, sure. I'm happy you got that question because I wasn't expecting that answer. So that, <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> so um, with that out of the way, we can get a little bit more into the actual planning questions here and a little bit more about yourself, Jeff. Sure. Um, so for our listeners, as a department head for planning and development services. What would you say your average day-to-day looks like in your position? It's a good question. I think a lot of people might think like I'm working on applications Mm -hmm. or leading studies or doing those types of initiatives. But because the department has kind of four different elements to it, a lot of political input, Right. You know, dealing with the administrative components of the department and, you know, getting ready for whether it's for council or GGC or community affairs and planning. We usually have reports on all of those committee meetings. Right. So just making sure we're meeting the expectations, you know, providing the right recommendations. You know, we're dealing with the budget, right? That seems yep. like it's a, a big one, even though it's towards like the end of the year into the new year. It's really like a full year thing. Oh, it You're feels like it's never ending. You're always working on it, right? Whether we're doing the number crunching and looking at the projects and getting that stuff done to forecasting development, right? What's coming, yep. what isn't coming, you know, looking at our volumes. Yeah, day to day is very different every day. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of changes recently in legislation that I'm sure is changed your day-to-day a little bit, maybe looking at what's happened with the province, <laughs> yeah. trying to figure that out. Yeah, the yeah, always that kind of, you know, look at the beginning of the week as to, okay, what happened over the weekend or, right. or what are the headlines? They slowed down a little bit now, which is, I think, a good thing, but there's still a, like a lot of work that we have to do because of that. And yeah, that changes the day-to-day. I think I like that though, even mm-hmm. though it is chaotic, because if there wasn't things going on and everything was just the same it'd be boring it would be boring and planning although it may seem boring on the surface (laughs) there's a lot of like tasty things that happen that we don't really that people don't really have an appreciation for oh for sure yeah do you have a specific example of something like that I don't know I think like there's a lot of like 
misconceptions about their like what the pl- what a planning department does mm-hmm. specifically for a municipality. Right. That's aside from the differences between like a planner that's like a consultant versus a planner that works for the municipality. Right. Those are also two totally different things as well. But I think one of the big misconceptions is that in the planning and development department, we're all planners. I don't think there's an appreciation that we got building specialists and we have professional engineers that are civil engineers that deal with servicing and grading and drainage. We have transportation professionals and engineers, right? Like active transportation falls under your Yeah, like active transportation. So dealing with, you know, the schools and safe routes to school and doing all the programming and whether it's active TOA or other community initiatives, trails, wayfinding signage, like that's just like one little component. Right. I think everyone, at least it's, I, I would say in my experience, because typically the planning group is the group that's most in the public eye, whether they're at public meetings or open houses when we used to have them right, or at like, you know, council or community affairs and planning committee making a presentation before council. Right. I think the big misconception was like, oh, the planner works for the developer. The planner is the one that builds builds the buildings. Well, mm-hmm. that's not the case. Right. And I think that that is like a big, at least when we were in more like face to face, person to person type of meetings, public open houses and open houses and stuff like that. I think that is like probably the number one like misconception about what the planning department does exactly. Yeah, like working on the communications team, um, social media falls under my umbrella, right? And one thing um, that I'll notice is we'll have residents maybe asking if we have a proposed development. Oh, well, like maybe I don't want something like that built at this corner. Why can't the town of Ajax planning department say, like tell developers exactly what we want? Um, or, you know, why can't we say no to A, B, and C? And I do think that's a huge misconception that I receive a lot on social media. Could you maybe talk about that a little bit more? Like why we can't just tell a developer what exactly we want somewhere? Well, I guess first off mm-hmm. is there's all, la- all landowners have land rights mm-hmm. and land rights come with what is the official plan? What is the zoning bylaw on those lands? And that kind of sets the permissions. Right. But there's also provisions within the Planning Act that allow landowners to change those permissions and go through a public process Mm -hmm. to change them. Ultimately, a decision is made by council, but that decision is based off of a professional planning recommendation. So a professional planner provides those recommendations for amendments, for or against them, right. depending on what they feel is most appropriate and in the public interest. Right. And I think that's another element. Like as a planner, as as a professional, like whether you're in planning or transportation or building or the engineering group, we owe an element of like professional and public responsibility to like the public interest. Right. So we always have to add that lens when we're reviewing something. So another misconception is, well, this is already a done deal. Right. Right. You've already made your mind up. Yeah. This is happening happening no matter what our feedback is. It it is going to happen. Yeah. It's not necessarily because of our feedback, Mm -hmm. but sometimes the amendments are so small or, or changing policy or provisions that are probably more in keeping with the times than maybe when those policies and regulations were in place. Right. So we're updating them, right? We also have to understand that there's other layers to the decision-making process. There's the province. Mm -hmm. There used to be the region, which I don't think is fully eliminated yet, but I think it's something that's coming through the various legislative changes that you mentioned. So yeah, the the atmosphere is changing, like the planning atmosphere is changing. Right. There's a little bit more direction coming from the province is kind of my, what I've been seeing as somebody who isn't a planner. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely more direction from the province for sure. And Jeff, let's say maybe there's a development, a proposed development in Ajax and it comes through the public process, it comes to council and let's just hypothetically pretend council decided that we didn't, like we voted against it. Sure. 
What does that mean? What might happen in that scenario? Like if council goes against or staff presents a recommendation? and No, like let's say a developer is looking to build something with this many stories sure. and maybe we just say like, hey, no, like we don't agree with this. Um, is there another governing body that they could then take that to to have that decision overturned or does it end there with agency no, no. council? Any, like if council overturns it, either a staff recommendation or a or or the a proposal put forward by a developer that mm-hmm. even that staff supported or was against. So if the decision goes opposite by mm-hmm. council, yeah, there's appeal rights for mm-hmm. most application processes to the Ontario Land Tribu- Tribunal. Okay. It's been LPAT or OMB, right. different names, but they're the they're kind of the land use planning tribunal that deals with appeals associated with amendments to various planning instruments. Right. So then they could technically overturn council's decision if they said no, like at that level? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they could. Yeah, okay. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Which is also interesting because I do think that's a little bit of another misconception as well, that we have the absolute 100% final say, but it sounds like we don't necessarily. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it. I think for the most part, council does, especially if they're in line with staff recommendation and community right kind of buy into the project which you would hope you kind of have those three elements all working right already together yeah. which makes good planning mm-hmm. right but when one of them is out of sync there's always the potential for that that appeal right to go to that next level uh, it you know it's a kind of choose your beware of the adventure that you <laughs> choose right because there's costs associated with it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the costs far outweigh the the actual changes. Right. How much effort do you want to put into it? Uh, these are these are even political decisions and and they're planning decisions too, right? Mm-hmm. You have to sometimes, you know, pick your battle. Right. And Jeff, I I wasn't actually really going to um ask this until a little bit later in the episode, but I think this might be a good time because we were just talking about developments in general there. Um, We're seeing increasing housing density. Why is something like that important for communities that are like Ajax? I think it's important for Ajax mainly because we are built out from like our low density ground related developments. And we are landlocked, right? Yeah, we're landlocked. So it's it's not like we have additional lands to develop at grade single detached semis townhouses on. Right. We have a, a couple pockets up on Church Street, just south of Taunton Road, but those will be developed out over probably the next ten or fifteen years. Right. Um, especially if the economy stays the way it is. <laughs> but I, I think this is really the only way Ajax can go right. is if we build up now and intensify look at midtown downtown uptown areas Mm -hmm. you know the uptown area durham center yep like that's a whole city unto itself oh yeah like the development (laughs) potential there is like tenfold picture a network of interlocking inner intersecting streets through between like sports check over to costco Right. And the, how big those parking lots are and what you could build on there. They have, as of right, like high density developments permitted, mixed use developments permitted. Those plazas are just like holding. It's like a bookmark. It's like we're just going to make money off of this right now because we don't have to. It's like we had MP3s, but we still bought CDs. Right. Because they were available because, at the time. You and know what? You're going to squeeze them. as much out of that CD yeah. as possible. So they're going to squeeze as much out of that land as possible until it makes good economic sense to go to that next level because they'll have to disrupt the way they did things before. I was talking about this this morning, actually, to a few people in the office and working in Ajax as a planner, it's kind of cool. Like you're only 11 kilometers north and south by seven kilometers east, west. Oh, my God. I I didn't realize that's how tiny it is. If you know (laughs) what's going on and where things are going on, like it's a really easy space to like work within. You know, when people are talking about a certain part of town, oh yeah, I know it. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. You know, you have like a picture in your head, what's at that four corners or what's going on. Right. Where in some bigger places, you kind of lose that. 
Oh, kind be... of grassroots kind of feel to it. Like I couldn't imagine doing that in Mississauga. So I think like the intensification piece is really cool because we have the ability and most of our planners have been here for a while. Like we know how the community is now. Right. So how do you gently intensify stable neighborhoods with kind of respecting the old way of doing things? Right. So I look forward to those kind of challenges that I think intensification would would bring but ajax has to intensify mm -hmm. it's it's it maybe it's intensify or die <laughs> right type of thing because if we're not building up in other ways how are we driving up our our population if we're yeah. tr truly going to be like a place where we live work and play right we're getting lots of warehouses we're getting lots of distribution we're getting we're working on arts and cultural components to our our town we're building trying to build up the village mm -hmm. right trying to get different commerce like all these things are like community building if you do it properly yeah. you create these places that, yeah places like are that people interesting want to live. and yeah. people want to be in right mm -hmm. yeah intensification is is really the only solution and we have lots of land in our urban area to intensify on and I think um, a lot of the times when people hear the word intensification, I think a lot of people think it's a negative. Would sure. you be able to talk about the positives of intensification and the benefits that it could bring? Yeah, I've heard the negative. And not to say that there aren't negative connections with intensification. You know, a lot of people go to crime, mm -hmm. more people. Maybe there's some social inequities. Right. They think intensification. They think apartments. They think yep. low-income housing. Yes. They think they think a lot of things that, you know, may be valid. But I think if it's done right, if you intensify in certain ways, if you make sure that you have those amenities mm -hmm. and those community elements that come along with the intensification. Right. Like, right? like walkable, transit, walkable communities. Yeah park spaces, improvements to the community centers, mm -hmm. upgrades to libraries, you know, having cool spaces like this, you know, the, the maker space here at the MCC. Those are elements that draw people to your community. If people have a sense of community and live in these intensified areas, you start building community. Therefore, people take care of their community. Yep. You know, it's like this whole kind of everybody watches everybody's back type of thing <laughs> in a way, yep. right? And and if you just look at more of the elements, not just developing buildings, and it's more about developing communities and making sure you're getting these other things that come with intensification and that we do the right studies and we do parks and rec master plans and we look at other assessments of our services you know, and looking at the trends based on as our population grows, I think, you know, the people will tell us what they what they want through that. Oh, absolutely. Right? The community will share and it will become obvious what the community needs. During university, I was living in Toronto and it was amazing that I didn't need to own a car. I could just, you know, I could go to my class. I could go to the grocery store. I could go to the pharmacy and then I could go hang out at a green space with my friends. Sure. And it was amazing not having that expense. And that's really, really hard to do if, you know, you're living in a suburban community where perhaps there are no stores close to you. Maybe this closest one is an hour or more walk. And then you, you're relying on a car or yeah. other kind of transport. I mean, I can't go down. I can't go down to one car just because of my family dynamics. But mm -hmm. I don't ever want a car once yeah. I could get rid of it. Yeah. And I don't know if I live in a more urban area. But I mean, I grew up in Hamilton. You didn't okay. need to look at a bus schedule. You just went to the bus stop. Yeah. And eventually the bus would come. The bu and not a, you, even yeah. eventually. The bus did come pretty much yeah. within minutes of you going to the bus stop. Yeah, I didn't have to think about when it. When transit just works like that, people will take it. It's easy. Right? And it's kind of like, you know, building the subdivision, but the school doesn't come until eight eight years later. Building the subdivision, but they're not going to build the commercial block until five years later. Intensification is definitely going to challenge planners and transportation engineers, in, like all the professions that are involved in city building to really push themselves outside of like maybe their comfort zone. Yeah, be a little bit more creative. Yeah, just be more creative, more open, more like less restrictive, more willing to like let people like, sure, let's see if that works. What's the worst that could happen? We solve a problem that we didn't know we had or we come <laughs> up with a, a unique solution that's maybe cost effective. 
And uh, so let's maybe change gears here a little bit. What do you love working about for a municipal government and what part do you find the most challenging? I think I like the security of the of working for a municipality. The municipality's here, but I like the like there's an endless amount of different opportunities. Even though I'm in planning and even though my first experience was just data entry, you know what? That's an invaluable experience because what that made me realize is like without that information as the director, knowing that we need to put that information in and that's where all that info should be, like if we're doing it properly, it's just like you just click a button and it it does a report. Like right. so when you're in it, you're at the beginning. But I think, yeah, I really like just working for municipality because I get to deal with different people every day. And Jeff, you're an Ajax resident, right? Yeah. So you're really helping the community that you live in and your family's growing up in. I and hope so. And you're, yeah, hopefully <laughs> making benefits to your own family life, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is nice to live and work in the same place, the same town. But there are some misconceptions around that <laughs> as a planner. I remember early on in my career, when I worked for the city of Pickering, they're like, never live where you work because <laughs> you could be out getting groceries and, and somebody's, somebody's going to be like, yeah. hey, you're the planner. <laughs> you know, what's, I got this question. And you know what? Okay. But like, I'm just trying that's to kind of, my groceries right that's now. <laughs> kind of, I'm not, I don't mind that. Like that doesn't really bother me. And I, to be honest, I don't think many people would recognize me either. Right. So, which I'm also okay with. It means my disguise is working, but working for the town, it's, it's fulfilling. Like you do get a really good breadth of experiences. I started right as that guy that putting in the numbers as a planning technician. Yeah, entry level. Entry level, it's planning tech, planner one, planner two, senior planner. Right, just move Coordinator, right supervisor, manager, director. I've done all the jobs, so. And other than your um, co-op, was all of that at Ajax? No, I was, so I was in co-op with B. Then I had like a summer job in Clarington in the okay. planning department there. And then I came to Ajax in 2006 as a senior okay. planner. And, you know, this is my fourth year going into my fifth year as being the director of planning and development services, learning so much. But I also have like a super awesome team, which makes like my job way easier. Uh, so yeah, that's, you know, special shout out there to, to my guys. <laughs> But. You know they're going to be listening to this episode. That's why <laughs> yeah, I said that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I got to make sure that I'm giving props where props are due. Is there a memory with your department that sticks out to you as an accomplishment that you're particularly proud of? And um, it could even be something that's, you know, something maybe the public might see, but it could be something internal that you all came together to overcome adversity or, you know, maybe something that I the wish it was know. something that the public could see, Okay, but it's not. I think for the... F- first year out of a bunch of years, I feel like our group's finally like coming together. We went through a bunch of years where we had people retire, people leave, move on to other jobs, kind of fragmented right. kind of department. Well, during COVID, there was a lot 100%, 100%, of 100%, 100%, right? And a lot of people were looking for different lifestyles. And there was some stuff happening just before COVID too, where we had some retirements and people changed their kind of angle to their careers and left Ajax and created other opportunities, which I was a, a be- beneficiary of. Right. And, you know, really trying to move the group towards like, you know, I think how Shane's kind of moved the municipality forward and, and for changing our listeners, the culture. Um, Shane is our CAO, our yeah. chief administrative officer. Yeah. Shane or CAO, you know, changing the culture. So, I mean, that kind of is a top down thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, we had a lot of new staff. We had people retire. We had different people in new positions. I had a whole new, I, I was responsible and am responsible for hiring all my managers that right. are in those positions. I think what I'm most impressed about over the last year and years, to be honest, is just the resolve that we've had 
to get to the point where we actually feel like we're moving more as a unit and working closer together and seeing kind of the fruits of our labor, whether it be with like a study or report or a project we're working on or process improvements to deliver approvals faster. Like it feels like we're more cohesive. We're doing cooler stuff. We do intramurals once a month. I think we're here at the MCC doing volleyball over lunch one day. Nice. But like just try to build this kind of like... The team culture. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, my object, my objective and, you know, talking about, because I, not that I'm retiring anytime soon, but you start to think when you're in these positions, like a director who's position, next? who's next and what's my legacy? Mm -hmm. And I don't really want a legacy. I really just want it to be better than it was when I, when I started it, you know, like it was here when I came in and it's, this is where I left it. And I feel good. And I feel good. And I feel like it's next. ready to go on to whoever the next person that comes in and plans the vision for the next 20 or 30 years, <laughs> right. right? For Ajax, long after all be, you yeah. know, long after me. Ajax, you know, 2081, <laughs> never mind 2051. People will be like, that Jeff Romanesky guy didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> Hey, maybe there'll be a sign for you. Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Maybe I'll have a park named after yeah, me. There you go. <laughs> um, and okay, so I actually think that's really great for this next question. Looking to the future, what's in the works for next year? Do you have any exciting initiatives or projects that you can share with listeners? Yeah, I think we're going to start kicking off our official plan review, okay. which is really good. That uh, That's basically our our land use plan, master plan, land use plan for the community. It's a 20-year plan. Oh, I wow. guess they're now 30-year plans, I guess, if we're going by by the province. And the community, they'll get some input. Yeah, there. it'll Perfect. be full public process. It'll take some years mm -hmm. to do, and there's lots of different components. So I think working on that, and then there's spinoffs from that, like secondary plans for the Go, go Node. Uh, maybe sorry, some, what, what is a go note? Oh, sorry. The go, the go train station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the MTSA or the, like, I'm not even going to, there's too many. I, I won't bore people with the acronyms, but the go station, okay. doing a secondary <laughs> plan for that. Doing a secondary plan for the Durham Center, looking at our downtown and moving those projects forward with, ex, whether it's through servicing extensions or whatnot. You know, working closely with the mayor. Mm -hmm. on just any any directives that he's bringing forward if we get any more like community infrastructure housing accelerator applications right. and requests so we'll always kind of have our eyes on the legislative changes mm -hmm. and i think i think really just kind of getting those work programs in place you know right. continue to work on the strat plan initiatives action 26 stuff yeah. our work plans which are super important. They're all intertwined. So right. yeah, there's there's a lot going on. But those I would say the OP reviews, the plans, those are those are big ones and working with the mayor on his his initiatives that he's trying to achieve. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but in 2024 we're going to be introducing a little bit more of an online um, process for if residents were applying for application permits. Yeah, we got right? a couple new technologies yeah. coming on. I think we I, I don't know the release date yet, but it, it should be earlier in the maybe first quarter of the new year, but application submission portal. Mm -hmm. So this will, I think it'll start with building permits and a few nice. of the more less complicated reviews, and then we'll move to the development applications. But another one is kind of cool is we're going to have our outward facing like GIS map where you'll be able to hover over properties of interest and oh, see... Okay applications and status yeah, it'll status be tied to the kind of like our tracking document right. which we hope is like useful for the public if they're curious as to what's going on or they haven't seen anything out and they're on the website so those are some cool technologies that are coming on that's well. actually really cool because like even for myself as somebody who knows ajax very well growing up here and now working here every now and then i'll see an address for something right i'm like where is that on Kingston Road, though? Or right. I can't picture this on Church Street. And then I have to sit there and I Google it. Right. So it would be perfect to just have that on a map. And I can see with my eyes, okay, 
this is that corner that it's at and here's what's going on. Yeah, I, I love mean, that. I think we're a little bit behind, but this will bring us up to level with mm-hmm. a lot of municipalities that have that. And we have a lot of de- active development applications. So it'll help people check in on those ones that may have been like more in the public know, right? Like a 599 Kingston Road or, right. or what's going on at Pat Bailey Square and future phases, right. right? So, and then through there, they could, oh, this map has other stuff on it. Yeah, Maybe, let's see what's know, going on. Let's see what's going on, right? Yeah. And I think you might be able to kind of toggles that you could toggle on and off if you only want to yeah, specific capture areas, a ward or right. a specific area or, or something like that. So that'll be a nice interactive addition to our website. And um, we're kind of getting close to the end of our episode here. But Jeff, one thing I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit about, you've been talking about all the different parts of your department, mm-hmm. um, the variety of it. And we were chatting just there a little bit about something that affects residents very much directly from a customer service. And this relates back to what you're saying that a lot of people think of planning development, that there's only planners in there. Sure. So what services does your department provide directly to the public? Oh, wow. I know there's a lot. There's, there is a <laughs> I'm whole, thinking about like traffic calming. There's I'm a thinking whole about raft the front of counter. services. There's a whole raft of services. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess maybe like a bit of like. What's P- like your most popular maybe PR email, for or... P&D yeah. right now? <laughs> it's like, when in doubt, come talk to the planning department. Okay, yeah. Like, if you have any questions, come talk to the planning Yeah, you're doing department. something at your house, come talk to If you're talking to, to a contractor yeah. and they say you don't need a building permit, come talk to the planning department. Right. You're looking to buy a house and it's backs onto a field, come talk to the planning department. Right. I think that's, like, we are a very useful resource for a lot of people mm-hmm. to make decisions uh, big decisions about like what they're going to spend a significant amount of money on, whether right. it's a house, whether it's a business, whether it's a property. Yeah. So, I mean, there there's that little piece. But what do we do? We, we do everything like we we answer all the questions that people need to know about what they can do on their property or what they can't do from a building perspective, from a grading perspective, from a land use perspective. We're responsible for, yeah, all the traffic calming, automated speed enforcement cameras, all the little bike logos and, you know, bike lanes and everything around town. Anytime a developer puts up sediment and erosion control fencing, that black fencing with the wood stakes around a property. Okay, yeah. Chances are they probably got approvals from the engineering department to start digging, piling up dirt, doing all these other things. You know, the building department, great resource. You know, don't get caught. Just come ask them. (laughs) Come ask for your staff. (laughs) Whether or not I need a permit or not. You know, here's a manual. Here's a little handout of how do I go about building that deck? You can Mm -hmm. talk to the planner at the front and they can give you options. Right. 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 We've seen pretty much everything somebody's thought about. But there's always a, a new twist and a new wrinkle. Yeah. So, you know, we'd be interested in hearing those things. Yeah. Planning is everything from development, though, to sustainability and environmental protection to like policy. Yeah. We didn't even talk about, we yeah, even sustainability. Talk about sustainability. Yeah. That's a huge piece. too. That's a huge piece. And like some really cool stuff, not only like internally when we're looking at our like greenhouse gas emissions mm-hmm. and like got really good like score on our, we did on our a- recent A minus or whatever, yeah. which is exceeding everything. Yes. Uh, which is super awesome. And Kim Richardson's group do, working on that with operations. And that was from the CDP, I believe. Yeah. So if listeners yeah. do want to check that out, we do have a news release with the details up. Um, and that's on ajax.ca slash news. Yeah. So um, some really good work going on there. And then our policy guys. Yeah. Making changes, looking at, looking for the OP review, but tracking, monitoring, listening to the ER postings. Mm-hmm. T- what's the province going to do next and try to maneuver that stuff. So yeah, we got, we got so much got stuff going, going on. on. We're a really good resource. It, I'm missing like so much stuff, but you don't yeah. realize like sign permits. We do sign permits. Right. Right. We do compliance letters. So if you're like buying a house or buying a property, your lawyer probably sends us something to say, does this property have any issues? Right. Should I know any outstanding orders? We do all that background research for the lawyers and doing that stuff. Development agreements, dealing with lots of money and securities and building roads and trails and working with operations. Like we do so much stuff. It's like true. it's hard to really narrow down narrow it down, right? Other than say we do planning. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys so need, a new, more um, than that. <laughs> you need a new department title. I don't one. know. It would like I'd be afraid that it would be too long. Yeah. Like, or we just have to turn it to an acronym, and then that would just totally confuse everybody. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And so with that, if people were looking to reach out to your department, they can reach out via email, phone, um, coming in person, right? Yeah, Is there email, any other... phone, in person. I don't think we have any social media Not handles specific, specific yeah. to planning, maybe in the future. But yeah, email, phone. I, yeah, I think, I think it's you're like planning services at planning Ajax. services at ajax.ca. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, I think we also have building services at ajax.ca. Right. And I'm sure they must contact us through contact us or right, yeah. any of the other networks or touch points or in input inputs into. Yeah. If it's a planning uh, inquiry, it'll find its way to you, no matter how somebody contacts the town. Yeah, yeah. definitely, <laughs> it definitely will make its way way there. We get lots of. We get lots, lots yeah. of questions. Oh, comments. I can just imagine. <laughs> I think we, I think in the last quarterly report, we're like in the couple thousand inquiries. Wow. Right, right, just in three months. Just in three months. Yeah. So, yeah, we get a lot of, a lot of people asking. Wow. Happening lots department. Of questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're happening. All right, for sure. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for um, coming on here and chatting with me today. I'm sure your department's work will be featured in more detail on many future seasons of TOA Talk. So I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us a little bit more about the inner workings of your department. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Devin, for having me. I'm Devin Jarvis with the Town of Ajax TOA Talks podcast. Episodes can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and on our webpage at ajax.ca slash TOA Talks. Listeners can download and listen to each episode offline or online from their personal device. If you have comments or feedback about our show, you can email corporate at ajax.ca. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk later, Ajax.